third generation Subaru Crosstrek is here. Well, it's here. Let's drive it. While this is technically being called a new generation, there is some carryover from the previous, including the powertrain. The base and premium trims get a two liter engine that makes 152 horsepower. But if you move up to either the Sport or the Limited, you're gonna get 182 horsepower out of a 2.5 liter four cylinder. There is no hybrid model available at this time, but we expect there might be possibly potentially in the future. I'm driving the two liter and when it comes to power, can you have a little bit of fun? I mean, yeah, I feel like initially, uh, you know, acceleration is not lightning fast, but once you get up to speed, you're definitely fine. I think one good thing to note is if you are driving in elevation, then there may be sort of a reduction of your zippiness, um, but that's because of altitude and that's to be expected. What is not unzippy? Kelly Blue Book videos. So why aren't you subscribed already? Something that has changed is the lack of a manual transmission option. Now you'll only have the CVT distributing the power. But Subaru's done a good job refining and working this CVT. And on the upper trim levels, you get paddle shifters, which simulate gear shifts. The chassis has been made a little bit stiffer. They're using more reinforced steel um, to hopefully get better safety ratings. And what they've done to the suspension is soften it just a little bit. So it's still pretty comfortable. I've driven on some really sketchy semi-paved roads. And honestly, it's a really comfortable ride. Um, I'm enjoying it. I feel like they've tuned everything really nicely. And of course, because this is a Subaru, all-wheel drive comes standard across the board. There's a new electronic brake booster instead of just vacuum brakes. I'm not sure any change is perceptible, but the brakes are solid and firm, and I like where they engage on the pedal. The steering gets a new rack and pinion setup. Again, tough to differentiate from the previous model, but it's got good feel and doesn't seem like it requires a ton of input to get you where you're going. X mode, which is Subaru's all wheel drive system comes standard across the board, is really effective off road. It sends power to whichever wheel you need really effectively. Uh, the transitions are really nice and smooth. I'm not feeling a whole lot of initial slip and it's really confidence inspiring when you're out here. So the other system that Subaru does really great is their hill descent control. And this, I'm not normally a fan of these systems, but this one actually is able to read what's going on really effectively and grab where it needs to grab so you don't go sliding down a hill. Um, but it allows you to focus on things that you need to focus on, like line choice and where your eyes are. The car's turning radius is actually really good. The short wheelbase is great for tight little hairpin turns while you're off-road. That's something that you don't notice until you need it. One other thing that really impresses me about the Crosstrek is that it gets 8.7 inches of ground clearance. That's more than some base model trucks. You can see why this is such a popular vehicle. It's so capable of doing a lot. One more thing to mention, and I'm gonna give Subaru a big hat tip on this one. They have made this cabin a lot quieter. There's been a 20% reduction in the vibration from the engine. They've uh, reinforced the roof for sound dampening. They've done stuff to the wheel well, to some of the cladding to help mitigate vibration. And honestly, overall, what that means is you're getting a much quieter ride. There's a little bit of wind noise, maybe a little bit of road noise, but overall, it's way improved. Also, I'm gonna say, even though this has a very sloped, sort of sporty roof line, uh, the visibility in the cross track is good. There are four trim levels available on the cross track. The base has a starting price of just under $25,000 without destination charges. That is the same as the outgoing model. 
but for your money, you'll get an impressive list of standard features above and beyond that all-wheel drive, as well as Subaru's EyeSight driver's assistance features, including steering responsive LED headlights, you'll get dual zone climate controls, 17 inch wheels, a tilting and telescoping steering wheel, keyless entry and 60-40 split rear seats with surprisingly generous cargo stashing space. On the base model, you will get seven inch dual touch screens, but if you do upgrade to the premium level, you'll get this 11.6 inch screen, which is oriented in the same way that your iPhone would be oriented. Now you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Both of those are standard, not wireless until you get into the higher trim levels. But one thing I do like about this, you still have enough buttons here for everyday functions that you use all the time but you also have little cheats up here. So you get your temperature, your oil temperature, and your speed, but then you also get your HVAC system kind of down here. So I really like the way that this is all organized. I think it's taken Subaru a little bit of time to get it perfect, but I mean, I think it's pretty close. The cabin doesn't scream luxury, but utility rules here. And Subaru uses interesting fabric choices and patterns for visual interest. And even though there is a fair amount of plastic, it's understandable in this vehicle. Don't forget that I told you the base price starts around $25,000. I do find the seats to be really comfortable. Subaru has reworked them. They have done some adjustments to sort of mitigate sway in them and ultimately make you more comfortable, especially on a long road trip. I am also going to caveat this and tell you that seat comfort is very subjective. So if this is a car you're interested in, absolutely sit in it. That premium trim also comes with push button start, USB A and C charge ports, and access to extras like the all-weather package that includes heated front seats, power moonroof, added safety features in blind spot detection, lane change assist, and rear cross traffic alerts. Subaru's suite of safety features, EyeSight, has seen some improvements in this generation. Subaru has upgraded their EyeSight suite of safety features. The main way they've done that is expanding the field of vision with the front cameras. So the car is really reading so much more that's going on on the road and consequently it's able to react and respond more quickly, making the system work even better than it used to. Starting at around $29,000 is the Sport, which gets you the higher output 2.5 liter engine, can't wait to drive that, the great X mode and hill descent functionality I mentioned earlier. You'll also get 18 inch wheels instead of 17s and sporty yellow accents throughout the cabin, as well as wireless charging and even more option packages. The Limited, which is the highest trim level, basically gives you all of those extras that you would have to add on as options in the lower trim levels. That one you're gonna get for around $31,000. Oh, that's still such a bargain by today's standards, guys. It's a lot of car for not a lot of money. The only things not offered in that price are an upgraded audio system from Harman Kardon and a navigation system from TomTom. Tom. Not sure that extra $2,400 is worth it if you've got your phone hooked up. The Subaru Crosstrek always does really well with resale numbers. It's one of Kelly Blue Book's favorites. So if you're looking to trade yours in to buy one of these, Click here and Kelly Blue Book can help you figure out what your car is worth. Competitors looking to attract your attention include the Jeep Compass and Renegade, Chevy Trailblazer, Honda HRV, and Toyota Corolla Cross. All of those similarly equipped to the base Crosstrek are more expensive. From the outside, the Crosstrek hasn't gone rogue when it comes to its styling. Its shape is the same, just a hair bigger, but it does get more rugged body cladding to make it look appropriately hiking boot-like, such as Subaru. There's usable aero in the wheel outlets and there are active grille shutters to help with fuel economy as well. So that cladding, it's not all for show. And knowing their buyers, those roof rails will come in very handy for gear. I've always liked the way the Crosstrek looks and think Subaru does a great job with color choices anywhere from chill white to bright blues and oranges. That's it. I mean, what more can you want? It's fun, it's useful, it's capable, it's reliable, it's affordable. Listen, if you like to get out, then the Crosstrek is something that you should get into.